Hey everybody, Nora Rebel here, and I am back. I've been on a bit of a break. There's been a lot going on in the world, so thank you guys for hanging with me while I took a bit of a pause and took care of myself and some things, because that's always important that we do take time for self-care. So recently on all major social media channels, I made the ask of you guys, what autism topics do you want to hear about or do you feel are lacking? And over and over again, one of the most requested topics was autism and diagnosis and self-diagnosis. So this week, we're going to talk about that. First, I want to highlight why so many autistic people feel that self-diagnosis is valid. Uh, and it is also the very first step for many autistic people before they seek out an official diagnosis, if they do decide to seek out an official diagnosis. Um, as an autistic adult who was late diagnosed at the age of 29, I feel it is important that I really mention and highlight that being diagnosed period is a huge privilege, especially for an adult person, because as we are growing older, it becomes less likely an autism diagnosis will be granted for a variety of reasons. Um, some of those being that some professionals say, oh, well, if you've made it this far in life, you don't need this diagnosis, or they only diagnose children, believe it or not. And some people may, who or even professionals, may not know what an autistic person, an autistic adult really looks like, because there is this focus on children. We also have a huge disparity in communities of color and people of color and people in low income areas where sometimes autistic behavior may be labeled as behavioral problems or behavioral issues and autistic people, children specifically, may not be caught because they are being punished instead of being labeled autistic. They are labeled things like rebellious or uh, disrespectful or inattentive or that they can't sit still you know these behaviors are labeled but they are thought of as behavior problems instead of neurological differences and processing differences and so being diagnosed late or being missed can lead to you going through life knowing you're different but not knowing exactly why or really you know when you are autistic and you don't know it you know that you have shortcomings other people don't have, or you struggle with things other people don't struggle with, you know you're different. You just don't have a word for it. So this label is really helpful for identity. It can also be really helpful if you are needing accommodations in school or in the workplace, because without having that diagnostic label, unfortunately, sometimes when you ask for help, people will deny you. And with an official autism diagnosis, it is classed as a disability. Therefore, your rights and protections are now guaranteed under the law. Alright guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the subscribe, turn on your notifications button because next video will be a follow-up on this video talking about my experience going through the diagnostic process and what that is like so you can know what to expect if you uh, are looking into getting an autism diagnosis. Thank you guys so much for hanging out. I'll talk to you next week. Bye!